Verse 19 says, and this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer. We need to give answer, an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And the, as the prophet Isaiah has said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees and they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. That verse is just saying something to me. Yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Simple, 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 simple illustration, introduction, then we're going to walk through the text. If you get a new job and you show up at your work, I'm going to challenge you and say, like, the, what just happened to John the Baptist? A delegation ought to send people to inquire of you, who are you? <laughs> they should. Because you shouldn't show up normal. You shouldn't show up as if you are one of the boys or one of the girls. There ought to be something different about you. That people ought to see something different about you. That they may not come themselves, but they'll send somebody. Who are you? <laughs> and I'm just wondering what are you going to say this morning in response to that. So as you look at this text in front of us this morning, here's where... What I want you to take away. Christians are called to be the voice that points people to the word. And notice the word is capitalized. We are to be the voice that points people to the word. So when I show up on my new place of employment, my new neighborhood, and I'm standing out amongst the crowd and people say to me, who are you? I'm going to say, I'm just a voice. Come on, y'all. I'm just a voice that points people to the Word. So my challenge to you this morning, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, after today, you ought to point people to Jesus. Come on, turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, after today, as a radical disciple, you ought to point people to Jesus. Amen. So this text, this text in front of us is a simple passage where it's the beginning of the book of John where uh, John, the Bible opens up by saying in the beginning was the word and talks a little bit about Jesus. But then it goes right into laying the foundation of John the Baptist and who John the Baptist is. Right after the verses, the first few verses open up by saying the word um, was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It kind of transitions and goes down. And it makes a point that Jesus himself is the light, but it also makes the point that John was not the light, but John was pointing to the light. But the, then the verse speaks a little bit about John's ministry, about John's work, what John was doing within the earth realm. And the John I'm talking about here, not so much John the son of Zebedee, who was the author of the book, but John the Baptist, who was a forerunner to Christ. If you were to jump down to verse 28 of chapter 1, You'll notice verse 28 making reference to the fact of the location of where John was at the time when he was doing this particular ministry deed that he found himself doing. The verse says that John was in Bethany doing ministry, baptizing, teaching, doing the work that God had called and ordained him to do. Now, what you need to know about this Bethany that's located in these particular verses, this is not the Bethany that is the same home of Lazarus or the place of Mary and Martha or the home that Jesus would frequent on occasion when he was in the vicinity. This is some location that's located east of Jerusalem across the Jordan in the wilderness 
that even archaeologists today are uncertain of where this place was, and it raises the question of the legitimacy of, of the name itself and how it was used in the scripture. But the point of, of, of the name is not so much to identify or lock it into the Bethany that Jesus frequented, but I want to make the premise it was just the name is mentioned because it was some location outside of the reach of the normal place of ministry where John set up camp and John was doing what God had called him to do. Now, if you know anything about John, he had a radical ministry. He didn't look like church as usual. Oh, come on, y'all. Matter of fact, he didn't dress as the normal churchgoer. Come on. I mean, radical dresser, you know, kind of like your pastor a little bit, you know, <laughs> you know um, just doing what he wanted to do and made it difficult, now hear how I'm going to say this, for the church people of the day to accept him, okay? Now, mind you, this was still under some sort of, let me use the term carefully, the Old Testament way of doing things were still operating in that day and age. And then John comes on the scene with a completely different message that no one had not heard before. And let me just give this here to you free. Um, he shows up, and he didn't come through the normal channels of the church. So all of a sudden, John is out there doing ministry, and the church world, or the people who are responsible for, for, for the word in that particular day and age, wanted to know who John was and what John was doing. So then verse 1, I mean, verse, verses 19 opens up by saying, and this is the testimony of John. So it tells us a little bit about John. And then it says, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Now, if we're going to point people to Jesus and realize that as Christians we have an obligation um, to be the voice that points people to the word, there are a few things that I want you to take away from what I'm going to share with you uh, this morning. And number one, I want us to be clear that if we're going to point people to Jesus and be the voice that point people to the word, we must have a clear understanding of who we are in relation to Jesus. All right, come on. We must have a clear understanding of who we are in relation to Jesus. Now repeat after me. Say, I must know who I am and who Jesus is. Come on, one more time. I must know who I am and who Jesus is. Now look at the verse. The verse says that the Jews, when the Jews, they sent priests. Now what's striking about this phrase, Jews, it's not so much talking about the congregation of Israel or the normal body of individuals who normally categorize themselves as Jews, but John is using this term in a derogatory nature to speak of people who were always going against Christ. He's speaking about the religious leaders. He's probably speaking about the Sanhedrin council. He's talking about the combination of scribes and Pharisees and people who were always inquisitive on who Jesus is and why Jesus was doing what Jesus was doing. Because like John, Jesus himself seemed to have a radical ministry. And it's interesting because these leaders, and notice the group of people that they sent. They sent the, the priests, and they sent the Levites from the home base in Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? Now, I find this interesting because if you know anything about John, his daddy was a priest. Oh, come on, y'all remember this. Y'all know this, right? So, so they expected that, understand with me, since his daddy was a priest, and you remember with me, at, at the onset of, of, of his mom's pregnancy, his dad was doing his priestly duty, and then all of a sudden, the boy is born, and they expected the boy to carry the daddy's name. Come on, y'all know this story, but he names him John instead, which spoke something completely different about who John was supposed to be. But the problem with John is he didn't go to preschool. Boy, do you know who your daddy is? Your daddy served in the temple. Now we see you mimicking your daddy, but you didn't go to preschool. Y'all not tracking with me. Yeah, come on, y'all. You, you didn't go to MIT. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, 
you, you, you, you, didn't, you didn't go through the process. So, so we want to know, we want to know, and they sent a delegation from the church, we want to know who you are. Now, notice with me that the text made no mention of them asking, are you the Messiah? But, but, but John is pointed in being clear. He said, Let's, let the record reflect before we even go into where we're going to go before, because I really know where y'all are trying to get with this. Let the record reflect, I am not the Messiah. Come on, I am not, it says here, I am not the Christ. And he confessed, and he said it over, and he said it over again, I am not the Christ. And it says, and he did not deny, but confess, I am not the Christ. Now, the reason I need to, to make this point clear before we go on, because sometimes as believers, you have people in church that have what I'm going to refer to as a Messiah complex. <laughs> you ever seen folk like that? So holy so heavily bound that they're no earthly good? Amen. Come on. Amen. Understand with me, point people to Jesus, not point people to you. <laughs> can, can we talk just for a moment? So, so, so here's what John says. I know what you're after, but, but I am John. I am not the Christ. I am a forerunner. I am not the one that, have come, that has come to, 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 to save the world from their sin. I, I am a predecessor too, but I'm not the one that's going to go to Calvary to die in anyone's stead. I need to make this point before we move on because I want us all to understand as believers in Christ, we're all frail, we're all human, we're all sinners, we're not the messiahs. Our goal are to point people to Jesus and not to pretend that we are the saviors of the world. I need to say that again because I want us to understand that if people within the house of God would understand who we are and who we are not, I think the church would be a little better off. I think the church would be filled because they don't have to bump into Jesus before they actually meet Jesus. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the problem is, is that we act so much as if we are the Messiah that there's no room to tell people about the Messiah because we want them to look at us. I want, number one, that we have a clear understanding of who we are and who we're not before we... Turn to your neighbor real quick and don't offend them, but just look at him and say, neighbor, he's trying to tell you you're not Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want us to understand that. So when we go out in the world, we need to realize that we're human just like the sinners in the world. The only difference between us and them is that we are saved. It's the grace of God that enables us to make us. It's the grace of God that causes us to press through. Are you hearing me this morning? So, so with that in mind, here, here's the second thing I want to take with him when we look at the text. So if we're not Jesus, here's the other thing we need to understand. Avoid the claim to be someone else that we're not. Be yourself. Does anybody know you're uniquely and wonderfully made? Be yourself. If you're going to point people to Jesus, don't point them as if you're Pastor Felix or Elder Derek or Elder Karen. Be yourself. Have your own relationship. Come on, can, can, let's read the text, then we're going to move on. I'm not going to be before you long. So then it says here, and they ask him, what then? And then he says, are you Elijah? And notice what he says, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they ask him then, who are you? Because we need to give an answer to those who sent us. Now, here's what you need to know about John. It was prophesied in, in the Old Testament that, that before the Messiah comes, Elijah would return. I mean, and the Jews carried this with them. They believed that wholeheartedly. And so they were looking for, the, for, for Elijah to come. Because you remember when Elijah left the earth, he didn't die, but he just transcended. So the hope was he would come back one day. 
And when they looked at John, John looked like Elijah. He sounded like Elijah. He dressed like Elijah. He behaved like Elijah. He was radical like, like Elijah. And, and what's striking about John's reference or um, a, a symbolism to Elijah is when Jesus himself was on the scene, Jesus even referred to him that he functioned in the spirit of Elijah. It's one thing to function in the spirit of a person than to be the person themselves. Are you with now? I'm going somewhere with this. And to say, well, if you're not Elijah, then he says no. Then are you a prophet? Because Moses says, even before Jesus come back, one of the prophets would be on the scene. And so these Jews and the Qumran community and all these people had hopes that these great things would happen. And when they saw John, they anticipated that he would be that. But John was confident enough in who he was not to pretend to be what he was not. Listen at me, and I know you're church folk, but he flowed in his own anointing. You got a whole lot of folk in church today that they'll turn the television on and see Sarah and see Jim and see John, and all of a sudden they want Jim's anointing and they want John's anointing and they want all that stuff. Let me say it again. You're uniquely and wonderfully made, and God made you the way he made you to do what he wants you to do. He don't want you to be like the other person. Quit trying to perpetrate. Quit trying to be like somebody else. Be who you are. Man, I'll never forget as a young preacher when I was coming up, I grew up in the Baptist circles. And man, in the Baptist circle, you ain't preached until you preached. Y'all know how that is. I mean, you'd be in the middle of your message and you have a good word and the deacons all line the front row and they say like, bring it on home, preacher. Y'all know this, come on. And, and it wasn't until you picked up your hanky and you took the mic off the stand. Y'all know how they do this. And put the hanky around the mic and you said, uh... Sunday morning. Come on, y'all know how this works. Then the whole front row sign up. Now you preaching. Come on, y'all. Now you preaching. And you had to say he died too. If you ain't said he died, y'all know how it worked. Yeah. Three days. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and me, in my stupid self, trying to be like somebody else, felt that I needed to be like that if I was going to preach. So every Sunday, here I was, perpetrating. Because tradition said, because culture said, because the custom was, I was pretending to be who I was not. And my prayer today is the church will stop pretending being who they're not because we're living in a post-Christian culture where the reason we can't reach the young people is because the shift has transpired and we still try to do church like the traditional folk where we might want to be like John the Baptist and go over in Bethany somewhere and set up camp outside the box and do some things a little different so we can attract people. The reason nobody's not asking you who are you is because they know who you are. Switch it up a little bit. Avoid the claim of being something that you're not. I'm not Elijah. I'm not the prophet. And then watch this. And then here's what he said. We need to respond to the Jews. We need to respond to the Sanhedrin. We need to respond to the Pharisaic culture. We need to respond to the people who send us. So who are you, John? And look at what it says, the next thing. So what do you say about yourself? And here's what John said. I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah has said. Here's number three, and I'm almost there. I want you all to see this, and let's talk. We are called to make the way straight. And point people to Jesus. I, I, I want you all to hear me say this again. You are called. I am called. We are called to make the way straight and point people to Jesus. Amen. Now, church, hear me say this. As a radical disciple, sometimes that will not look like what you're used to seeing on a Sunday morning. You got to be okay with that. 
Sometimes that will not look like how grandma and them did church. And there is nothing wrong with how grandma and them did church because it got us to where we are. You hear me? And you don't know where you're going unless you understood where you came from. But we must understand that tomorrow's generation, the church of tomorrow, is not living in grandma's generation. I want you all to hear me say that. The church of tomorrow is not even living in our generation. Matter of fact, you don't believe me, check your cars. I doubt seriously if anybody in here has an 8-track player in their car. And the reason I'm asking that is because we come to church on Sunday morning with an eight-track mindset when we are in a flash drive. Oh, y'all not hearing me, community. Things have changed and things have shifted. And the goal is we got to point people to Jesus. This was the problem they had with John. John didn't go through their schools. John didn't go through their training. John didn't get ordained by their council. John didn't get licensed by their presbytery. Matter of fact, John's daddy was a preacher, and John started a church in the wilderness outside the church, and they couldn't understand that. John, why are you doing what you're doing? And John is trying to say, things have changed. My job is to point people to Jesus because he's coming. And church, hear me say this to you. Jesus is coming. I have an obligation. You have an obligation. We have an obligation to point people to Jesus. And here's the reason I need you to understand your uniqueness. You need to do it how God called you to do it, not how folks say you ought to do it. Come on, are you hearing me? His identity was not tied in what went before him. And this was the problem with the culture in making the shift. He was completely different. Come on, he gave up his priestly robe for some wild animal hair. He gave up the meat in the century and the wine for locusts. Come on, y'all not hearing me. He gave up all that stuff for stuff that they couldn't handle. So here's what they did. Man, who are you? I like that. They thought he was crazy. So here's what it says. I am a voice. I am a voice. Come on, say I'm a voice. Say it again. Say I'm a voice. And here's what I want you to understand of where your voice is located. It's in the wilderness. Don't fool yourself to think in the inside perimeter of these four walls is the wilderness. No, no, no. The wilderness is when you leave here and you go to your neighborhoods. The wilderness are where people who don't know Jesus live. The wilderness are the places where you work. Come on. The wilderness are the neighborhoods within which we live. Are you hearing me? The wilderness are the schools that we attend. So listen to where the voice needs to be. Not in the sanctuary in Jerusalem. Because here's what he says before we got this in John 1 and 14. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. So here's what he did. He went out in the wilderness. I wish we had some folk in here. That'll go out in the wilderness. And then lock into this. I'm in the wilderness, and I'm crying, and here's what I'm doing. I am making straight the way for the Lord. My job is not to point people to me, but it is point people to Jesus. John, why are you doing what you're doing out in the wilderness? I am a forerunner preparing the way for people to come to Jesus. Lock into this because the people in Jerusalem are not doing it. Come on, is this making sense? So you have to see yourself as a forerunner, a uniquely called person that's out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way, make straight the way, clear the path. So if I'm going to clear the path, guess who has to get out of the way? I need to get out of the way so I can't tell folk, look at me. I can't pretend to be Elijah. I can't pretend to be a prophet. I can't pretend to be in places that God didn't place me because I'm human like you. So move out the way and point people to Jesus. Listen, listen to what he said. Listen to what he says. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. He says, he says, now they had been sent from the Pharisees. <laughs> I like this. If anybody's going to talk about you, this is free. This isn't even in the sermon. It's going to be church folk. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, I've been doing this a while. <laughs> I have yet to have a community hall meeting and say, so I just disagree with pastor. 
And that's never happened to me. But it's always church folk, the Pharisees. Who are you? I'm different. So when people ask you, who are you, you should be able to say, come on, y'all. Your fights when it comes to doing the things of the Lord is not going to be out there because those are the people who need Jesus. Amen. It's always in here. So the Pharisees, look at this. It says the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they ask him, so then why are you baptizing if you're neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? And here's what John says. He answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Now, I don't even know what to do with that. There's just so much meat there. Y'all have to help me with that one. <laughs> I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. And it says, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Listen to the question again, and I'm done. Listen to the question, verse 25. And they ask him, okay, okay, cool. So, so help us understand, we know your daddy, we know your lineage, and we know what you didn't do. So if you, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Let me, let me meddle a little while. Why are you doing an ordinance of the church if you're not ordained? Why are you serving communion if you not ordained? Heck, why are you preaching if you're not licensed? Why are you doing church stuff? Right? If, if, if you didn't go through our process. Sound like church? <laughs> John says, I baptize with water. And among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Let me show you this last thing, then we'll stop. And we're going to pick this up because there's too much there. When pressured about the legitimacy of your priestly anointing, redirect people to Jesus. <laughs> redirect people to Jesus. Let me, let me go here. And then, then we'll stop this. Baptism in the Old Testament cultic system was something that was practiced. But here is how it was practiced. It was not practiced among Jews baptizing Jews because Jews by default were a chosen race. Come on, y'all. By default, they formed the nation or the, 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 the religion of Judaism and so what would happen is when they proselytized people or any Gentiles that were converted to Judaism, what would happen is the Jude, the, the, uh, and because Gentiles were considered defiled or unclean, they would go through this ceremonial process of baptizing or cleaning or cleansing them so they could be brought into the fold of Judaism. Does that make sense? So, so here's the problem with what John was doing. Number one, he wasn't part of the priestly tribe, even though he had priestly blood in him. He didn't come out of the church. And the problem with John is he wasn't just baptizing Gentiles. He was baptizing everybody. <laughs> he was baptizing everybody. And, and their problem with him, John, it wouldn't have been so bad if you were just baptizing Gentiles. We can understand that, but why are you baptizing us? Oh, y'all. <laughs> and, and here's what John says. The reason I'm baptizing everybody and the reason I'm baptizing you, because Jesus is right there and you can't see him. Let me be like grandma, less than you be baptized. Y'all hear me? Are you with me? Because here's the thing. There's a leaven in you. There's something that's tainting you. There's sin in the camp. There's something that has your eyes blocked. There's something that has you covered up. And unless you... you
rid of the old and get a hold of the new, you can't see Jesus for who he is, even though he's standing right amongst you in your very midst. So here's what he says. Listen, I am baptizing with water, and it's only for the remission of sin because my goal is to prepare the way. But oh, when Jesus comes, I've got you get ready for the fire of the Holy Spirit that's going to come on the inside. So listen to me, people. Listen to me, people. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Credentials are okay. Credentials are necessary. Credentials and all that stuff are good. So don't hear me saying those aren't important things. But what I do want you to hear me say, you don't need no qualifications to point people to Jesus. Are you hearing me? I believe that's my job, just like the usher's job, just like the deacon's job, just like the worship team job, just like the lay people job. When people ask you who you are, you ought to say, I'm a pointer, baby. I'm a pointer because my job is to point people to Jesus. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because he's right here in your midst. He's transcendent. He's far, but he's imminent. He's near at the same time, and you can't see him because of your stuff. And what I love about the Gentiles and the Jews is the Jews grew up in church. That's all they knew. And their religiosity blocked them from seeing the new thing that God was doing because of their tradition. So John said, all of us need it. Does this make sense? We all need it. We all need it. So here, here, I I want, if we're going to be radical disciples, people, come on, worship team, come on, Pastor Kay. When we leave here today, our goal is to simply point people to Jesus. Just point them to Jesus. Come on, just, just, just point them to Jesus. Just say, I'm a forerunner. I'm a voice to point people to the word. Not to point them to me, but to point them to the word. Capital W, Christ, the Messiah, the Son of Man who came to seek and to save the lost. So here's what I want to say this morning as I'm done. Man, if you're here, huh, and, and God is speaking to you and you're saying maybe... I need to know Jesus like that. Don't, don't harden your heart. The Bible says now is the accepted time. It says now is the day of salvation. My challenge is choose, choose who you're going to serve. Yeah. Be it God or man. Yeah. So bow your heads with me this morning. Bow your heads with me. And I want you to search your heart. I want you to search it diligently. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm not a good forerunner. Sometimes I'm not a good voice. I allow circumstance. I allow situations. I allow my own failings, my own frailty to prevent me from crying out in the wilderness. If you're like me, I want to begin by saying, man, just do like I did. God, forgive me. Forgive me for missing the opportunities. Maybe we begin there. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me for failing you. And for those of us that already know God, maybe that's a good starting point. Those missed opportunities when people said, who are you, my response was wrong. I perpetrated. God, forgive me for that. Maybe your prayer is one of forgiveness. Maybe that's not your predicament. Maybe that's not your situation. Maybe it's like, man, you know, I really don't know God, so I can't talk about him. And hear God saying this morning, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If that's you, come. Come. If that's you, come. He wants to forgive. He wants to save. He wants to bless. He wants to be who you would have us to be. Give it to him this morning. If God is speaking to you, I want to give you a chance to come. And allow God to be God in our midst. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because